Hey Inventor users, you ever want to create a 3D sketch but you're not quite sure how to get there? Maybe you know what the side profiles look like, but you're not sure how to create the 3D spline in space. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create a 3D spline by using two 2D sketches. We'll start off by creating a new IPT file. Now to create a 3D sketch, we'd start the 3D sketch command. We can start a line command, and then you have to use these 3D glyphs and figure out where you're at in space. Now, not impossible, but you do have to get a little used to how this would work and how to interact with this interface. Let's just use the easy 2D environment to create this 3D spline. We'll go ahead and we'll exit this, and we'll just delete this first sketch for now. We'll start our first 2D sketch, and we'll create this 2D sketch on the XY plane. We're going to start the spline tool and we're going to just sketch a couple points in space here to create our spline. We'll select OK to create the spline and then we can go ahead and we can exit out of this sketch. So we have our first sketch here in space. We're going to start a second sketch and this time we're going to place it on the XZ plane. I want to project some geometry from our first sketch so that we drive some of the data into our second sketch. So we're going to project, and we're going to project the endpoints of our spline into our new sketch. Then I'm going to create a couple of construction lines, and we'll create them from these projected points. Make sure that they're 90 degrees here, and we'll just drag them out a distance and place it. And we'll draw another one from this other projected line point, 90 degrees, and again we'll just drag out a distance. We'll select OK, and we'll turn off the construction geometry. Now we can draw another spline on this sketch. And again, we're going to just sketch a couple points, but we'll use this projected geometry as our endpoints. We'll select OK to create the spline, and then we can select Finish Sketch. So now we have two 2D splines drawn on two separate 2D sketches. Now we want to create the resultant 3D spline based upon these two splines. And again, if you knew what your side profile would look like on the side and for the top, this could help you out creating that 3D spline that would be the resultant of those two side profiles. We'll start a new 3D sketch. And this time we're going to use the intersection curve We'll select the spline in the first sketch, and then the spline in the second sketch, and then select OK. And notice that we have a 3D sketch that is now shown in space, created from those two 2D sketches. If we look in the browser, we have our 3D intersection here in space. We can use this to then create other geometry. We'll go ahead and we'll create a work plane at the end point of our 3D intersection, and then we'll select the 3D spline itself to place the work plane. We'll start a new 2D sketch on that work plane. Make sure we'll project the geometry of the end point, and then let's create a circle, and we'll make it 3 eighths of an inch. We can then do a sweep of that profile using the 3D intersection. So now we have a swept 3D, 3D part using those two original 2D sketches. Go ahead and we'll turn off the visibility of this work plane. And now we can still use those original sketches to drive the geometry that we created for our 3D model. Let's go back to our first sketch, and we can add some dimensions. We'll add a dimension to this point, back to the origin. And this point, make this point 25, 125. We'll create some overall dimensions. And one more back here to the origin. 
and then we'll select finish sketch. So now we have some dimensions on here and if we update these dimensions we can drive our 3D model. Let's go ahead and we'll change our overall dimension to 1.25. Notice that our sweep hasn't updated but the overall spline is updated. We go up here to the quick access toolbar, select local update and notice that our 3D model updates accordingly. Notice also because we projected that geometry from the first sketch into our second sketch, the second sketch also updates. Again, we can make additional changes, select update, and our 3D model updates. So that's a quick easy way to create some 3D spline geometry and drive our 3D model based upon two 2D sketches. If you want to learn more about the essentials of Autodesk Inventor or advanced topics, check out our premium course content at myigetit.com.